Hello there, Brian Padilla. Hello. Hello, so nice to see you. It's great to have you on the red couch. So great to be here. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'm not even sure if we should, should tell our viewers how we got to know each other. Um, let's just say it was at a wedding. It's at a wedding. It was a great time. It was a beautiful yeah. wedding. Yeah. And um, we made some funny photos that we're not going to share on the internet. Yeah, I think that's smart. We should not. But they yeah. were very great, great photos as well. Some funny, some really great. Yeah, so Brian, by some coincidence, we share the same profession. It's not a coincidence. It's probably, um, there's probably a reason for that. You're an HR professional by background and uh, you're very senior HR professional. And uh, viewers are probably interested in the question that we all ask ourselves. Why do you do what you do? It's, it's a great question. I think for me, um, I really think about sort of as I progressed in my career, I realized quickly, I have so many interests, right? I have a nonlinear background, which I'm sure we'll get into. Um, but I, I love that in my role, uh, I spend so much time with different businesses, right? Different business leaders, people who do very different jobs, right? And, and I get to spend so much time diving deep into their strategies, understanding the ins and outs of different business lines, right? That's exciting to me. I, I love that. I love the variety. So in other words, no two days are the same. Um, and I, I think that really has a lot of influence on why I really chose to stay you know, in this profession and on this path. It, it really is just that ability to spend time and to connect with so many different professionals uh, and to learn everything about what it is that they do to bring success to our company, right? So that's really what drives me. It, it, it's it's the variety. It's that no two days are the same. And, and it's what I bring to it too. I've learned over the years that I bring a different lens, right? Obviously I'm thinking through the lens of, of people um, and it's so much fun to, to really reveal that to the different leaders that I work with so that they understand the importance of, of bringing that lens to the table uh, when we're thinking about you know, even business strategy, right? You've got to have, for every strategy, there has to be a lens, you know, toward people. And, you know, what I'm really keen on understanding, but I will, I will, first of all, ask you how you got to where you are today, because as I said, you know, you're very senior already. Um, it, but maybe you could also integrate that into the question is, what is the, you know, in terms of the people people business, sometimes we don't talk about human resources anymore, but what is the current main challenge that you feel the world of HR is facing? And then you can also talk a bit about your career and how you got to where you are today. It's a great question. I think it, there are many challenges. Um, and, and, and interestingly, I think a lot of the challenges that uh, those in the HR profession face are sometimes industry or company related, right? So mm -hmm. I will tell you, I have the, you, you, you hear this, you know, it's become cliche, this, this, uh, this quote, you know, a seat at the table, we're looking for a seat at the table, right? And uh, I, I am very fortunate to have the benefit of that seat, right? So it's not even something that I think about. I think, I think that's a challenge, a challenge that the, the profession faces is really just being factored and integrated into the business itself, right? Which it should be. It's it's a vital function within a business. Uh, I think that's that's a challenge for a lot of HR professionals that they're not uh, incorporated in a meaningful way. You know, um, I will say in my in my role and throughout my career, I've had the benefit of being really integrated uh, and, and being able to bring my perspectives into you know influence positive business outcomes, right? With people strategies. Um, so th that's a challenge. And right now, I mean, we're, you know, we're coming out of the sort of the, the remote work, uh, topic is, is hot. Uh, that's a huge challenge. I think for a lot of organizations right now, especially in my industry where you have, you know, I, I will generalize, but it's generally true. You know, you have CEOs, I, I'm in the entertainment space. Uh, you know, for those who don't know, I, I work for Lionsgate. Uh, they, you know, we produce film and television, right? And a lot of our CEOs are very uh, focused on that in-office culture. And right now that is still continues to be a huge challenge after, you know, nearly three years of, of employee populations working from home 
and doing so successfully, I might add, you know, we had great success during the pandemic. We were very fortunate as a, as a company and as an industry uh, to be successful during that time. And to now have to, you know, return to the office, we, we actually are in four days a week. It's challenging, you know, and it's challenging for, um, I think, the, the function, human resources as a profession, as a function, uh, because we are struggling to compile the data that really informs meaningfully uh, the need to be in office, right? And I don't think that's been done. So I think that's a challenge uh -huh. that we are continuing to work on uh -huh. Uh -huh. so that we can provide answers, right, and, and, and context for our employees. And uh, I think there's, it, it's, I, I was surprised today because I was speaking to a client in Germany and they don't even have to go back to the office. So I was surprised because I thought it was a trend everywhere. I'm definitely true. It's definitely true for Switzerland and the US going back to the office at least three to four days a week seems to be the trend right now. One day of home office max. Um, and, um, and I I feel, and I'm not sure if I can say that in public, but I feel that HR is in a bit of a crisis right now. Do you have an opinion on that? Because, you know, we've both been in the field for a long time. Um, I think the crisis is that they don't really know what they're here for anymore. Do you feel that this is the same trend where you are? Or do you think, no, 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 it's totally different in the US or in, at least in the companies that I've seen? We still have very much a role. You you said you you have a seat at the table. You know, in Switzerland, often HR is still very administrative and transactional. What's your view on this? Yeah, I think my view is, I, I guess, first of all, I don't feel that I'm experiencing that crisis because I have worked throughout my career, and, I'll, and I'll, we should talk about that, but I, I've worked throughout my career to really have a meaningful impact, right? So, uh -huh. so I go out of my way. I, I, I proactively partner with my leadership to, I, I'm curious, I leave with curiosity. I, I want to know. So if we're going to, so they'll come to me, let's say a, an executive comes to me because they've identified a new strategy, right? And all they really see me as is someone to help them to um, put together a, a budget, right? We think about salaries associated with people, right? That's a very small piece of a, a business strategy, right? But I go further. I ask questions. I want to understand these strategies. So, so over the years, I've spent a lot of time really just having great conversations and discussions and being curious about what those strategies are so that I can better inform what my strategy will be, right? To support those strategies. Uh, I think that's really important. I think HR professionals have got to immerse themselves uh, in the business itself if they want to sort of overcome this crisis that you're that you're calling out, right? They've got to prove themselves as business leaders, you know, not only HR leaders, but business people. They have to be business people. And I think that's really a huge part of um, the reason that, that's really been a huge part of my success throughout my career. Yeah. It yeah. has been sort of focusing on the business first. Obviously, you've got to be, you know, as an HR professional, there are many, many factors that must be considered at all times. So you've got to bring your expertise. But I think first and foremost, for me, my success has been really fueled by that knowledge and that immersion within within the business, right? That, that's mm -hmm. been most important uh, for Fantastic. me. Fantastic. I think uh, that's, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Gives me a little bit of more confident in the function. And, um, I, you know, I think we have, I would say right now where, you know, the, where we, we cross the topic to global mobility, um, one of the things that I think we need more of is at least here in Europe, more diversity, equity, and inclusion, and we need to do more for psychological safety and belonging and mental health. 100%. And I, I didn't forget anything, but these are things that are very important to me personally as well. So what, what's your what's your take on, on these three topics? Are these topics that you have to or you deal with on a daily basis in your work? Yes, absolutely. So I guess if we start backwards, we start with mental health, right? We have really made so much positive change on that front. Uh, and I think really where it began is normalizing, normalizing, even discussing something, you know, uh, such as mental health, right? Normalizing that we've had many, uh, we call them um, fireside chats, right? Where we will set up for the entire company conversations, right? With, with various senior executives. And one of the topics uh, actually last quarter was 
mental health, right? So when we brought senior executives to come to these fireside chats to speak on the topic, right? And that showed our, our employees that, you know, yes, we can talk about mental health. Um, we can, it, it's okay to say, hey, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to come in today. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a mental health day, right? That's normal. That's okay. That's what sick time is for, right? Or leave. Um, that That's a huge part of it. So it's normalizing the topic of mental health within the organization. The benefits that we offer uh, include mental health benefits. You know, we, we actually partner with a, a company uh, that is app-based, online-based, uh, that provides uh, online talk therapy, right, to employees and their dependents, right, and the company covers this. So, we've 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 made some uh, strong efforts to normalize the topic, uh, and I could see the same for DEI, right. We think about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, that has been really incredible to watch. I, I partner with our chief diversity officer often. Um, you know, as part of my role, I I support I, I oversee the business partnership for corporate uh, groups, uh, both in the, the television business, specifically at Lionsgate, television distribution and television production. And then I also manage a group that is our um, HR partnership for productions, so physical productions, right? And uh, when you think about a television production specifically, depending on the location of where it's being filmed, um, depending on the size, depending on the duration, right? There are so many factors uh, that have to come into consideration. Uh, and, and so we have spent a lot of time really tailoring uh, DEI focused uh, training uh, for our leaders, for our leadership, and also for our you know, broader uh, populations, right? On these productions, uh, really with inclusion, you know, at, at, the, at the center of it. Uh, so that's that's been really, really critical. I think for all of these things, I think you said DEI, mental health, what was the third one? Psychological safety and belonging. Psychological safety, right? Mm -hmm. So again, belonging, psychological yeah. safety, tying into inclusion, right? Yeah. Education is key. You know, I think that's yeah. that's that's number one. So I think we we as an organization at Lionsgate have really focused in on edu educating our employees and executives. I think that's that's key. Um, but it's also connecting it. How are we how are we tying it to our company, right? So yeah. whether we, are we saying that you know DEI is is critical because uh, it, it aligns with our values. Yes. Is it critical because it makes our business outcomes better? Yes. Right. And we can show yeah. that. Uh, we yeah. can show yeah. that very specifically. So that's also been a part of it. So, so you're educating uh, in terms of, you know, broad terminology, what it is. Right. And then we're also educating in terms of how does this connect to our business and how does this make us more successful? I think that's also really, really crucial. Wow. That's amazing. I, I asked you a lot more questions than I intended to, because I just realized that you have like this whole reservoir of knowledge and understanding of topics that I'm really interested in. So uh, <laughs> sorry I'm that I that I went deeper it. there. Uh, and, uh, and thanks for giving us all these insights. Um, we also have some more junior colleagues usually listening in and um, in the space of uh, this in the space of human resources, Global mobility, intercultural coaching, intercultural training, DEI coaching and training. You know, it's sometimes really hard to get a foot in the door to get started. Many of the, for example, interns I work with, um, they they have very good, um, let's say, intellectual background, have studied to master level, but getting uh, the foot in the door is sometimes hard. So is there any tip you would have for anyone more junior who would like to start in our field? Sure, you know, I, it's it's a great question. I think, that, and there are so many paths, right? And I'm seeing so many, um, you know, individuals who are newer in their careers, who are beginning their careers and they're, and they're seeking out a profession in human resources, which I think is fantastic. You know, I I, I think so many of us came upon this profession, you know, in some way or the other, and didn't think, I didn't think of this as something to study, right, in university, in college. Um, you know, I think there are many things. And you, you touched on internships, right? I think those are critical. Internships provide, you know, really valuable experience. They also provide you with a, a, a network. You know, maybe you've had multiple internships. Uh, now you have a network. You have access to HR professionals, uh, who uh, have experienced your, you know, your your work ethic, right? Who you've worked with and you've learned from them. Um, I think another really important piece is is leveraging just the personal connections, social connections. Um, looking at, you know, so if you went to a specific university, right? 
if you identify that there is an, an, an HR professional who went to your university and you reach out to them on LinkedIn uh, to have a, an informational conversation, chances are they're probably going to say yes. Personally, you know, I, I recently graduated from uh, Cornell. I did. I completed my master's in 20. 22. Right? Time has Congratulations, gone by. Congratulations, by the way, Thank you. Brian. Thank you. It's fantastic. Cornell is such a highly regarded university, you know, like we even hear about it. So, really, well, thank it must you. have thank been you. very hard to get it to. Was, it was challenging. Um, it was. It was. I, I, I'll be honest. It was very, it was very challenging, uh, but it was a great experience. And uh, I will tell you, Anytime I have had a an undergraduate uh, Cornell student reach out to me for thoughts and advice, I have always responded and said, "Absolutely, let's talk." Right? Yeah. So I think that's another thing to 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 do. It's really sort of leveraging. Yeah. Okay, what are the shared connections? What are the shared yeah. pieces? Right? Absolutely. So, yeah. And you know what? People often yeah. underestimate these networks. I mean, I'm a coach. You know, I tell people networking, networking, networking. This is what you need to do everywhere. Um, I once hired an intern just because they were in the same student organization as I was when I was at uni. And because the interview didn't really go well, you know, like from the interview, I could not have hired the guy. But, <laughs> but because I knew, you know, what it meant to be a leader in that student organization, I said, he, he's probably just not just not very good at selling himself in an interview. So I hired him just on that basis. And yeah. I was, you know, he became later on, he became one of my first uh, direct hires. We hired him into the company. He was just a great guy. He just wasn't very good at selling himself. I understand that. That's tough. But I think that's really important. And and even if you hadn't hired him, let's say, right, you may have connected him with, with yeah. someone that you, know, you have a connection with, right? I think that's really where it begins. It's that yeah. that initial conversation can lead to so many more, um, you know, which I, I'm always happy to do. So if I've yeah. met with an entry level candidate uh, and they, they, we, we had a great meeting, I'm going to, to share that resume around. You know, I'm going to have my eyes open. If I see an opportunity on LinkedIn posted, I will share it with them, right? So I think that's that's a really important piece. Other thing I wanted to touch on was there are many um, HR leadership programs. There are companies that hire, you know, master's level graduates into programs where you are accelerated, right? And you're placed into a rotation, you know, a, really a fast track um, uh, for an HR professional. And I, you know, I'm not, I don't have an ex exhaustive list of companies like this. I think GE is, is one of them that's famous for that type of, of program, but that's also a really great avenue uh, yeah. in terms of fast track uh, up yeah. the career in this profession. I, um, I really began my, my, my career in, in HR working at NBC, the broadcast, you know, NBC entertainment, uh, here in LA and, I they had this program, this you know, HR leadership uh, program, yeah. and I, I, I so wished I had known, you know, because yeah. I, like many uh, HR professionals, I began as an assistant. You know, I, I I was an assistant to the CHRO, right, for the for the company, yeah. um, and and really progressed from there, right, and and but but that program can really fast track a career. Yeah, that's it's great that you're saying that. I almost forgot, but you know, that's actually why I ended up at Deutsche. Because Deutsche was one of the only companies at the time, back in the 90s, offering a trainee program when you yep. graduated from university only for HR professionals. Yep. Uh, so it was very innovative at the time to do that uh, because there were still other banks who told me, no, 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 we only want you, you know, if you want to be in the sales area. We were, we're not interested in hiring an HR professional. And I was very determined to go into HR. So, uh, so yeah, but Deutsche offered it and that, uh, yeah, and that's how I ended up there uh, initially. That's amazing. And now we spoke a little bit about networks and networking and, you know, I mean, we recently met at a social event and we're keeping in touch through Instagram and WhatsApp. So do you have a favorite social media platform? You know, I would. Probably, and it's indicative of my generation. I <laughs> probably Instagram uh, is my favorite. I have not familiarized myself well with TikTok, although I do see the TikTok reposts on Instagram. Uh -huh. I should probably work to get a little more familiar. But yeah, I would say Instagram. But you know, to be honest, I try to not use it too much. I, it can become quite addicting, and I'm not a big. I don't post a whole lot. You know, I, I post very sort of selectively. Mm -hmm. I find that, especially if I'm traveling, if I'm in another country. Uh, you know, when, when we met at the wedding in Germany, right? I 
I did not post much while I was there because I wanted to be in the moment, you know? So I, I think what I'll often find myself doing is taking a quick picture and then I'll, when I have time at home later, I'll post. Uh, but Instagram, Instagram's a great way to sort of keep you know, quick tabs on your, your network, right? Because the stories, the stories are quick. You see sort of what everyone is up to. Yeah. So Lovely. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting a bit of a fan now of YouTube. I have to say, I think I only just discovered the potential of YouTube, but then also I use most of the social media, mainly professionally. So I think, you know, it's a bit different when you're in a corporate role than, you know, when you run your own business. So, oh, hundred percent. I, I think YouTube has think some I'm, cool stuff yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. YouTube is great. I mean, I've been watching YouTube videos for years. Um, I guess I just didn't think of it as a sort of social yeah. Connection, but it is. I mean, people connect on YouTube, you know, in, yeah. in the same way. Um, yeah. I think when we think about professional, we think about LinkedIn. I honestly, I, I, as an, and I'm sure many HR executives will relate. It's a challenge for me to use because I get, I receive so many incoming sales inquiries. Yeah. Right. My inbox is flooded. It's overwhelming. Yes, I, you yes. know, I, I can't yeah. uh, keep up with with my LinkedIn any longer. It's, yeah, it, it's yeah. too much. I, know. I understand. <laughs> And um, now we have, uh, just before the, the interview, we talked a little bit about the upcoming holiday season. Do you have any other things you would like to share with our audience? Is there anything specific, you know, where, you know, people could contact you for? Or do you offer mentorship programs or do you actually maybe look for somebody? Anything you wish to share with the audience that we can promote in the show notes? Okay. Sure. Well, look, I, I will say um, I love to be a resource and uh, to the extent that there is interest, I am happy uh, to meet with anybody who would like to sort of brainstorm around their career. I do this often, uh, you know, not only for my my colleagues who maybe work at other companies, but I think it's really important as, um, you know, within the profession that we connect with one another, right? And that we keep each other uh, informed and share knowledge. Um, so to the extent there is interest, I'm happy to do that. And I can be found on LinkedIn um, and I'll be very happy to receive a message that is not sales related. So <laughs> it's like from an actual person and not a robot. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I'm happy to, to be a, a resource. Fantastic. Brian, it was fantastic to talk to you. And thank you for sharing all of your knowledge with, with us today. This was great. So happy to be here and, and great to see you. Thank you for having me. Thanks.